Every fall, the Jewish community celebrates the new year, the Jewish high holidays, or the Yamim Nuraim in Hebrew, the days of awe. We begin with Rosh Hashanah, which is the Jewish New Year, and then it begins the 10 days of repentance, where we take stock of our lives. We say, what have we done since last New Year? And these days of repentance lead up to Yom Kippur, which is the Day of Judgment. Yom Kippur is usually translated as the Day of Atonement. But if someone asked me, what is the day really all about? It's about the opportunity to be born again and to experience unconditional love. It's, it's said that in, by the rabbis in the Talmud that God has a book of life in front of God. Um, and on Rosh Hashanah it's written what our fate is for the coming year, and on Yom Kippur it's sealed. And during the 10 days of repentance we have the ability through giving tzedakah, through giving charity, or through asking for forgiveness, tshuva, um, or through prayer to change what's written. There should be real work going on. There's nothing wrong with waking up every morning of those 10 days and looking in the mirror and saying, am I really who I want to be? Where am I not? And what can I do to do better? And then you get to Yom Kippur, and you really do put down everything else, and begin with the words of Kol Nidre, all the vows I made during the year, they're over. They're done. They're behind me. On Yom Kippur, we go to synagogue, we pray, we fast, we ask for forgiveness for those we have wronged, to really begin to begin the new year anew. God can't do that for you. You have to do that for yourself. And I think that focus on interpersonal relationships combined with the, the sacredness of the fast really make it a very powerful day. The fundamental assertion is you will be reborn no matter what you've done. That any God who truly exists is more than big enough to understand and forgive anything any of us has done. And then the hope is if you can love someone unconditionally, let them really be reborn, maybe, just maybe, they could turn to other human beings and treat them with a little bit of that love and a little bit of that willingness to let other people in our lives be reborn. And then uh, we end with the sounding of the shofar. It's a moment of marking that the fast is over and we've been forgiven. In my family, we all gather back at the house, and I think this is why actually Jews, even if they don't fast, go to break fasts. Because deep down, there's actually an intuition that the shared breaking of the fast, even if you haven't fasted, is the holiest moment of the day. You gather with people you love, and in our house, that means we pour either vodka from the freezer or single malt whiskey from the cabinet, and everyone, even the non-drinkers, gets a glass, and everyone together raises that glass and says, l'chaim, to life, because that's really what it's about. It's the sense of relief that we've been forgiven for another year. We know it's going to happen. We know that at the end of the day, we're going to get forgiven. There's no question about that. But you know, there's something to be said about feeling like your life is in balance for 25 hours. It's as if you've had 10 days leading to one day, leading to that moment when you get together with people you love and you pledge that the next year is for life. <laughs>